Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. Today's video is going to be a garden walkthrough because it has been a minute since I have posted anything. As you all know if you have followed my channel is we had Hurricane Barrel um, towards the beginning of July then we had over a week of massive rain and then I was gone. My very first grandchild was born and I have been up in the Dallas area helping my son and daughter-in-law and it's been such a wonderful experience. So that is why I haven't posted. It's been about two weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you around with me as we look through the garden. We're going to start in the area what I call my little 4x4 four four raised garden bed. And in this garden bed, I have planted... The reason for this garden bed was this right here, this plant here, which is a Rose of Sharon. And it is a blue chiffon Rose of Sharon pollinators love and that I'm glad that it's finally starting to grow. I let some seeds go so some things self-seeded and I'm very happy that I did <laughs> but now look what they're doing they are so taking off. This happens to be a blue porter weed and I had a couple of plants in here and I let them go because I wanted to see what color of Porter weed this was going to be because right next to it I have a red porter weed and the blooms on this one were gorgeous yesterday and so they're they've um, given out and they'll probably bloom again in a day or so it was just covered in blooms and then on the other side I have a purple porter weed my blue porter weed isn't, it's over there. So it's interesting to see how this, um, how, it, how it spreads its seed. And it spreads its seed pretty, pretty well because I have seen this plant in multiple beds. It is easy to pull up. So it is not a problem pulling it up. But I did want to see what was here. Also in this bed, I have the John Fannick Phlox. You'll notice I've not been able to, please forgive me, I've not come through because I've just made it home. I have not been able to come through and really do any deadheading or cleaning up of my, my plants. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing what it's been like out in the wild on their own for about the last month. I also had another plant that I want to draw your attention to, and I do believe this is a weed, but it had a really interesting, um, if you will, flower. And so I don't know. I it's a, it's a little yellow flower. I don't know if this is a. Yeah, I just, I really don't know what it is, but it is very tall and I wanted to let it go because I was curious. And then in the back that there, I've got a volunteer Tithonia. Let me go back there. But before I go back there, I just had this green anole jump and catch a bug. The anoles love this flower bed because it's so dense and they are patrolling along here all the time, eating, eating little bugs. Okay, now I'm going to go see the Tithonia. So I don't know how well this is going to do because it's all the way in the back by the fence, but I did let this one um, continue to grow and we will see. I've already got a bloom on it, which is nice. So we'll see how that goes. But as you can see, it is a mass of plants right here and I'm okay with that as you know I'm a huge porterweed fan because along the Gulf Coast the Texas Gulf Coast south of Houston where I live and garden 
this plant does very well for us and it is probably my number one pollinator attractor in the yard. So now when I come from my 4x4 bed and then I've got my container of red porterweed, I look this way and I have hot lips and hot lips is pretty much not doing a lot of flowering and I think that's because it is in the heat of summer. So hot lips is huh, not really hot at the moment. Hopefully it will start up in the fall. I'm not a real fan of that. In my garden I do like longevity, I do like lasting, and I do want it to at least last through the summer. So for as much as I wanted hot lips and got it into my garden, <laughs> I don't know how much of a fan I am. So we will, we will see. The verdict is still out on hot lips. But when I look up, I have the beautiful and gorgeous passion vine. Love, love, love what my passion vine does every year. And it is the host plant to the Gulf Fritillary butterfly. And then down below, I have the mid tier, if you will, Flame Acanthus. Let me get a little closer. And the Flame Acanthus also grows through periods of bloom and um, bloom and rest. And this is what the seed looks like. If you bring the seed pods in, I recommend that you put them on a paper towel and then put a paper towel over because they pop open and those seeds that are inside will just pop and fly all over. And I have found Flame Acanthus does very well um, from seed. And so if you can't find the plant, you can certainly plant it. But Flame Acanthus is a wonderful native plant to Texas and it attracts butterflies, hummingbirds, and it is a host plant to the Texas Crescent butterfly. Isn't this passion vine just gorgeous? Oh, I love how it covers these five trellis panels every year. Okay, now I'm going to turn and I'm going to look at my what I call my tree bed. And my tree bed got um, got pretty well hurt by Hurricane Barrel. Oh, can you see over here? I'm gonna take a little quick mention of the downy woodpecker over here. And I think he wants to fly and go to the suet feeder. Let me zoom in. Yep. So as you can see, I don't have any of my containers up. <laughs> this is going to be work in progress just getting back. But as I was saying, my salvia really got hurt by the hurricane a month ago. And I did cut back. And as you can see, what I have cut back is starting to come back. And I didn't realize, now that I've been gone, I didn't realize I should have cut back even more. It wasn't leaning at the time, but now these are really leaning into my Mexican bush sage or my salvia leucantha. And I should have just whacked these all back, and I didn't. But you can see the growth is starting, the new growth. And hopefully we will have blooms pretty soon. The other that I didn't cut back is blooming, and so it is full of pollinators because I didn't cut everything back. I'm going to go on the end. The Mounding Lantana is a very nice plant to have in the yard in the heat of summer. It is one of my favorites. It's from the Blumify series. And this lantana, 
attracts pollinators also. It mounds, it doesn't sprawl all out. And I have both the red and the rose color. And so Lantana in this heat, because now we have very high heat. Yesterday our heat index was 110. Plants have a hard time flowering in that, in those conditions. My Greg's mist flower is flowering a little bit more back in through here where it's a little more protected and things are holding their own most of the flowers you can see the salvia here that i did not come back cut back is flowering beautifully this is amistad and then right next to it is the kufia and the kufia is still blooming good it doesn't have as many blooms as it did before i left but it is blooming and doing very well the pollinators love it as one big bumblebee flies in <laughs> as if right on cue okay now i'm going to turn to the back of me and show my new garden bed so my new garden bed I put in in April, and it's doing fine. The Tithonia got completely decimated by the hurricane. So over on that side is not nice, and I haven't been able to do a whole lot with it. But everything else is definitely holding their own. The Probably the standout is this dwarf red porter weed. And it's not really a dwarf. It is different in that it has very thin bloom spikes, but I've been so happy to have this because this is a centerpiece in this pollinator garden that's blooming gorgeously. I'm gonna come out to the front of this garden bed. So looking at it, the Salvia Nemorosa is okay. Um, it's not doing fantastic, but it's holding its own. It's, it's blooming. I have been able to do a couple of things and I did come in and cut out the areas that had died and needed to be cut out. And then my little Joe Pie weed that I transplanted from a pot has been doing fine. The yarrow is interesting. I thought it would flower more and I do love the texture of the of the foliage. I really like it. It's interesting. I just don't like the fact that it doesn't bloom beautifully for me. So I'm maybe I have it in the wrong spot or I picked a variety that this was supposed to be a variety that does very well here. Um, I can't remember if this is native or not, but it's doing okay. As I come around, let me show you this. Okay, look at that porter weed. It is tall and beautiful and just flowering like crazy. Next to it is Hot Lips, and Hot Lips is not doing really anything. It's kind of again on its same, you know, the same as my other plant. It's not really flowering, it's kind of taking a break, and I'm not really a fan of that. So, mm. and Coneflower is doing okay. This is Cheyenne Spirit, and back here is the aster oh i am so happy to have this it bloomed and bloomed and bloomed through the spring and i have deadheaded it and now hopefully in the fall it's going to start blooming again but this is a native plant and pollinators are attracted to this got an anole over there these garden beds are just filled with anoles Okay, as I come over here, I've mentioned 
Tithonia is such a wonderful butterfly plant, nectar plant, and the butterflies are on this plant all the time. And so what did survive, I left from the hurricane. And here is a branch that is surviving and flowering. And so I also have some volunteer plants. And the volunteer plants I am going to let come up and we'll just see what this looks like. Next year I'm gonna be more diligent and a little bit more savvy in when I plant these plants, I'm going to provide more support. Some of the suggestions have been to do that for all of y'all that grow Tithonia regularly every year. And I did not, I did not provide any type of support for them. And the hurricane did bring them down, totally, totally understand that and I need to do a little bit better as as I move forward oh look at this gorgeous cardinal climber <laughs> I love it love 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 it and the reason I love it is because of it's gonna start flowering wonderfully and probably in another three weeks or so we're going to have the start of the hummingbird migration and this plant just flowers prolifically and hummingbirds love this flower cardinal climber is the cross between a red morning glory and a cypress vine and it is it grows from seed so i just collect my seeds and just replant it and I love that this is on a five panel trellis and it just gets so gorgeous. I just love the coverage. Oh. Okay, so if I am behind in the back from my Cardinal Climber and I turn this way, this is my Mexican flame vine, and you have heard me talk about this. I love this plant. I love how it grows. I think it is wonderful. I love how it branches out. It's just, it's just a delightful plant. I'm finally starting to get buds again. Look at this. So my only criticism for me oops, as I get this out here, of my Mexican flame vine, is it grows beautifully. And then in the heat of the summer, it takes a break for me, and it doesn't flower. And it did this last summer too. Now granted, we're really hot right now. And, but when it stopped flowering, I think in May, June, July, August, so that's three months. So all summer long, I've had this beautiful plant. Let me go on the other side and no blooms and the butterflies love these blooms and so that oh I'm not a fan of that but if it flowers into the fall and late fall maybe I'll be okay with that we'll see so next to it I have my canna lilies my canna lilies are growing nice and tall I'm not a fan I love the foliage if it doesn't get um, eaten by the uh, Brazilian skipper, but I'm not a fan of this particular variety. This is called the President, and it's red, but I don't, I'm not a fan of the blooms. They're not very showy. I love the foliage, but for the foliage that I have, I would expect more showy blooms and mine aren't so if I do grow canna again and I'm not convinced I'm going to but if I do grow canna again I want to find something with a larger and more beautiful bloom the the pollinators still appreciate them but I don't appreciate them as much and before I leave my south side I do want to show how my vines and everything are doing coral honeysuckle is doing well 
this pink colored porter weed. Oh, I love the growth on it. And then back here, this is my Pride of Barbados, which is a, another pollinator attractor. And I really find this as an interesting plant. The foliage is interesting, but I love that bloom head. And those bloom heads are very, very striking. And it's difficult for me to get back here, but you can see in the back my fire bush is just on fire. Love, love, love it. And so do all the pollinators. I'm gonna zoom in and then I'm gonna zoom back out. I've said this before, but diversity is key in the pollinator garden. A nice big bumblebee here on the blue porter weed. Diversity is key, and I have bumblebees all over my yard. Native bees that are native to Texas. And when you have native plants, as you know, or subtropicals or tropicals, they do well in this heat of the summer that we have along the Gulf Coast, hot and humid. And, you know, a dry heat is different than a, than a humid heat. So today I think our heat index is supposed to be 110, maybe 99 straight temp, and that's because that humidity makes it more difficult because you, when you sweat, it doesn't evaporate. So it does it does a number on plants too. All right, now I'm gonna go over to my shade area. And as you know, I was really disappointed. I should say very, very bummed with what the hurricane did to my shade garden. And it laid down my coleus and caladiums and salvia madrensis. So I did stake up the salvia madrensis and you know it's one of those things <laughs> what can you do so i didn't cut back the coleus because i didn't i when i've cut coleus it takes a long time to come back long time meaning i didn't want it to be a two month long process and so it is leaning over onto the brick and I've left it because propping up, I didn't have time and I had some holes and so I decided to move a couple of con a container and I have let, and I decided since it isn't looking how I'm happy with, I am gonna let the coleus flower and the pollinators are very happy. They love coleus blooms, even hummingbirds love coleus blooms you wouldn't think so but they do and I typically let my coleus flower starting oh late August September so oh well <laughs> it's not looking how I like anyway so I'm letting 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 them bloom the hurricane did alter growth patterns <laughs> Which I, you know, you got to expect that. And I'm happy that it didn't get decimated to where things aren't growing. So they're growing. Just not how I had envisioned or planned. So some, some bandage points look a little bit better than others. And... Some plants are doing gorgeously. Caladiums love the heat and the humidity. And I'm very pleased with the salvia madrensis. 
So if you followed my channel in the spring, you knew I was really excited for some of the new coleus that I had purchased. And this one was supposed to be super vibrant in color, like four or five different colors and just bright. And it is not. I am not a fan. This is Blair's Witch and I am not a fan of what this looks like. So I did order this and it's growing nice, nicely. There's nothing wrong with the growth on it. Um, it's just not doing and giving me the color that I was hoping for. Neither is another one. And this one is El Brito from Proven Winners and it also was supposed to be just gorgeous and bright in color and it is not. This one gets a little bit more shade than the Blair's Witch but neither one is this bright popping eye color that I was expecting and I ordered both of these online. The plants that I purchase in person, I have a better idea of because you can actually see them, you know? Like I knew Main Beale Street from the Main Street series here was going to stay this gorgeous deep red burgundy color, and it has. Um, so that's, you know, an interesting learning for me. And way in the back, I have a container of coleus that I never thought I would continue to keep in the container and I have cherry drop which is new this was a trailing this is advertised as a trailing coleus and it does some trailing it also grows tall and I have chocolate drop in here and chocolate drop is also from proven winners so this is cherry drop and this is chocolate drop and that's both of these are trailing. You can see cherry drop is kind of tall. Chocolate drop pretty much is trailing, but this is really pretty. And then in amongst it, I have one that I ordered called Ruby Road. And Ruby Road is okay. I purchased all three of these online, put them in a container, and they were in the back of this garden bed. And so I think they were a little bit more protected in the hurricane. The one next to it was not, and it got blown over pretty much. I do like the color of this. I thought I had my, oh yeah, I do. This one is called Wild Lime. Oops, can I get that? Yep, Wild Lime. And the reason I like wild lime is I just loved it for the texture and color. All right, on to the next, which is this gorgeous Salvia madrensis. Oh dear. The reason I said, oh dear, is I saw this yesterday making a chrysalis and it looks like the ants got to him, unfortunately. Ugh, I hate fire ants. But this Salvia Madrensis patch is wonderful. I love it. And it will flower a beautiful butter yellow color in the fall. So now looking over in the North Bed area, the Cardinal Climber that I have planted along the fence, we do plant them in the ground. I just have a protector, um, their lawn or garden borders. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's all that is. It's just so we don't weed whack. It's not a, it's not a container. Um, we do plant them in there to protect them and then just let them grow up the fence on fishing line. And I love what it does over here because they bloom beautifully so we have them both in the south and in this north area. So 
this garden took a hit because it wasn't getting when we were gone it didn't get consistent water and I might have lost some plants I feel so bad about that but I'm going to show you the garden <laughs> and if I did lose my bush salvia I'll feel really bad but this one looks tough that one looks like there might be some life in it so we'll see it looks like it got fried and then all of my fennel has wound down and it's wound down earlier than it typically does for me and I still have some green in the in the stalks but there's nothing here available for the eastern black swallowtails to to use it is pretty much done and then I have salvia, so a native salvia, Henry Duhlberg over here, and mystic spires, and some native milkweed, a little bit of Greg's mist flower, but this bed is looking tough. Poor bed. And the reason this bed didn't get consistent watering, we think, is because the city line, water line was broken near our neighborhood and they had to repair it. And I think dirt and sediment got in and some of our lines, our drip lines were plugged. So, ugh, and then of course we were gone. So then that made it worse because it's been really, really hot. My blue butterfly clerodendron is trying to flower. And it has been flowering. And now I'm going to go over to the area that I use as my staging area. So under my cypress tree, where we have shade, I put containers of plants and my hanging baskets. I put them here because we don't have, I do not have my hanging baskets on drip irrigation. And so what I will do is bring them here under the tree and then we will water under the tree. And so some things didn't make it. Here's my rue plant I feel really bad about. That's a host plant. He didn't make it. And looks like the delphinium is given up, <laughs> given up also. So all in all, things are okay. I'll be able to put out some of these shortly and put them back under my tree. Some didn't do and fare as well. And I do want to make a comment. So this is the second year I have tried um, the Supertunia Vista. This was Supertunia Vista bubblegum. And it was gorgeous in the spring and early summer. Just absolutely gorgeous. But petunias don't like our heat and humidity. I think it's the high humidity because I've seen many people grow them in very high heat. They don't like it. I was hoping to nurse this along and see if I could get it to flower in the fall, but it is a goner. <laughs> but that's the thing. If you don't have and you don't purchase plants or plant plants that grow well in your area, it makes it really, really difficult in times of high stress. So I just wanted to show you this is one of the things that I do to maintain and keep my hanging baskets when we are gone. Okay, pretty much back where we started. If I didn't have drip irrigation, I wouldn't be able to have the pollinator garden that I do have just because of the consistent water that's needed in a pollinator garden. So I thank you for joining me today. Uh, I see another little anole here. And I'll 
don't know if you can see him. He is really little. Right there. <laughs> he is a baby. Got a lot of bumblebee activity going on. But thank you for joining me today. This was just kind of a uh, walking around the garden just to see what it looked like after I had been gone for so long. Not just gone, but also the hurricane and the rain and then being gone. So it's been, it's been a month now since the hurricane and the garden has not gotten much love, but plants are resilient and they come back and they grow and as long as they have access to what they need, like water, they just do so well. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for joining me.